This man is Mel Renfro. He is part of Speed Incorporated, the Dallas Cowboys, the fastest team in football. In 1966, the Cowboys dazzled the Eastern Conference with their speed and went flat out to a title. From their ends and defensive backs to their linemen, the Cowboys terrorized the NFL with sheer speed. On kickoff and punt returns, Cowboy specialists parlayed a crease of daylight into six points. speed could cause opponents mistakes or overcome mistakes of their own. It was defensive speed that capitalized on breaks by the wanton destruction of runners and passers alike. The defense channeled their speed into points as they blazed a path to the end zone. backs could run, and they glided easily through heavy traffic. It was in the ends that their speed was most clearly reflected. The Cowboys had Bob Hayes. When it was man against man, a foot race to fortune, it wasn't even a contest. When the Cowboys met the Green Bay Packers for the NFL championship, it was the classic battle of speed versus power. Trailing 14 to nothing, Dallas doesn't lose its cool. Calmly, the Cowboys come back. First, Dan Reeves. Then, Don Perkins. At the end of the first quarter, the score was tied at 14. champions don't collapse. In the fourth quarter, the Packers have rebuilt their lead to 34-20. Frank Clark has outsped the Packers secondary. When Meredith finds him with a bomb, the Cowboys only trail by a touchdown. This man cannot mask his displeasure. With time running out, Dallas launches a desperate drive for a tie. Meredith connects with Frank Clark. It's Bedlam in the stands and on the Dallas bench. The Cowboys surge inside the Packer 10 as Meredith hits Pettis Norman. But the valiant comeback was shackled when Tom Brown intercepted the beleaguered Meredith's fourth down pass. It was a tough end to a long season, a season in which the Cowboys blended all the facets of football into a championship. Though comparatively light for a pro fullback, Don Perkins has combined his physical gifts and determination to become one of the game's finest fullbacks. Perkins' lightning acceleration at the snap of the ball enables him to explode past the line of scrimmage and into the heartland of the enemy. The ability to keep his feet after absorbing the jolts of would-be tackles makes Perkins very difficult to contain.
Inside the 20, Don Perkins lusts for the goal line. More often than not, the result is a cowboy touchdown. At the start of the season, Dallas planned to use gifted Mel Renfro at halfback. When injuries sidelined Mel, free agent Dan Reeves took over and delivered. Dan Reeves led the Cowboys in rushing, was second in scoring, and tied for the league lead in touchdowns. Though not endowed with great speed or size, Reeves is an intelligent runner who uses every ounce of his innate abilities. In pressure games, Reeves would deliver the big plays. Dan was the second leading receiver for Dallas. Eight of his touchdowns came by way of the pass. On many occasions, he was left wide open. This was due to the extensive coverage opponents used to harness Bob Hayes. Against Atlanta, Hayes will draw the Falcon defense to the middle. Reeves will swing into the vacated area. With everyone concerned with Hayes, Reeves can walk across the goal line. Backfield coach Ermo Allen molded a ground attack that lent balance to the passing. Perkins and Reeves' ability to penetrate prolonged gains was due to a big mobile offensive line that ranks second to none. The line opened corridors for the runners and provided an impregnable sanctuary for Don Meredith. Number 68, Jim Bokey handled the charge of defensive ends. Guard Tony Lissio cut down rampaging defenders. Two at a time. The line was quick. Giant tackles like Ralph Neely, number 73, could sail downfield and obliterate enemy obstacles. Number 62, Leon Donahue, was a veteran pulling guard who led offensive thrusts to either flank. Offensive line coach Jim Myers developed a coordinated blocking unit utilizing brilliant individual skills. When the line worked in unison, it meant touchdowns. Don Meredith operated in daring fashion behind this line and had his finest year as a pro. Meredith picks secondaries apart with his pinpoint aerials. When the defense overcommitted, he saturated areas with swing passes. Meredith's long loping stride made him a third runner in the Dallas backfield. a purposeful scrambler, Dallas rollout offense presented Meredith with frequent opportunities. He converted these opportunities into five touchdowns in 1966. A talented array of receivers complemented Meredith and made the Dallas offense the most explosive in football. Veteran Buddy Dial has made a career out of clutch catches.
tight end, Pettis Norman, is a punishing blocker and a tough man to bring down in the open field. Frank Clark could operate at either flanker or tight end and scored from both positions. Number 35, Pete Jett, is one of the 14 free agents who stuck with the Cowboys. As a receiver or blocker, he is equally consistent. The former basketball star can float up in congestion and make the crowd pleasing reception and has the soft hands to cradle the bomb. The Dallas offense in 1966 was an awesome scoring machine that led the league in total points and fought a scorched earth battle on every field in the Eastern Division. Fans who packed the historic Cotton Bowl every Sunday came for various reasons. Dallas means pretty girls. They come for the spectacle of pro football. They also come to see the beauty of the bomb. But when things aren't quite going their way, they react like loyal fans anywhere. One thing they all come to see and cheer is the fierce cowboy defense. In 1966, the Cowboys got to the quarterback more often than any other team in football. Defensive end Willie Towns, number 71, was converted from tackle by Ernie Stautner and was an instant success. Towns' lightning charges and mauling style left rival quarterbacks all wrapped up with nowhere to go. With more experience will come finesse. In 1966, Towns handled linemen with quickness, coupled with brute strength. Jethro Pugh, number 75, is learning to focus his aggressions on quarterbacks. George Andre, number 66, is a veteran defensive end. His rush is consistent and always punishing. Number 77, Jim Colvin, deals out his brand of violence from defensive tackle. Colvin's running mate at tackle is all pro Bob Lilly. Lilly, number 74, is the quickest tackle in football. He destroys offenses. His powerful rush overwhelms blockers and consumes quarterbacks. It often takes two, even three men, to contain Lilly. Even then, your chances are small. Eventually, Bob will wade through the blocking shield and sort out the quarterback. Linebackers, like Chuck Howley, supplement the rush of the front four. Number 52, right side linebacker Dave Edwards is always ready to meet the challenge of a runner head on. Leroy Jordan, number 55, moved into the middle in 1966. 
His blitzes made the secondary's job much easier. The Cowboys' secondary is the fastest in football. All members possess sprinter speed and lightning reflexes. They use speed in a singular violent blur of action. Coach Dick Nolan teaches them to react to the ball. Sometimes it's breathtaking. Along with speed and an appetite for aggression, there is also a little luck involved. Safety Mike Gector was the comeback story for Dallas in 66. Free safety Mel Renfro is the quickest member of the racehorse secondary. Warren Livingston, number 41, has a knack for the spectacular. Green was all pro for the second straight year. The balance of both offensive and defensive units was the overriding factor in three key Dallas victories late in the season. The Cowboys stared in disbelief. They had the ball on their one-yard line. The players diagrammed, and the phones were hot. From his own end zone, Don Meredith coolly moved the ball club. When no one was open, he took charge of the game himself. Gent cleared his defender, and the Cowboys had penetrated midfield. But time was still their enemy. Again, Meredith was forced to run, this time to kill the clock. An overly zealous Redskin fouls Meredith out of bounds, and the ball moves 15 yards further toward the Redskin goal. Fifteen seconds remaining, Danny Villanueva kicks the decisive field goal. The comeback victory gave the Cowboys a confidence they maintained throughout the rest of the season. The volatile Browns came to the Cotton Bowl, trailing the Cowboys by only one half game. Behind 7-6, the Cowboys take the lead as Meredith throws a screen pass to Reeves and the wily halfback fights his way through the Browns and across the goal line. The Browns regain the lead at halftime, 14-13, as Frank Ryan throws a touchdown to Ernie Green. Two field goals give the Cowboys a slim 19-14 lead at the end of the third quarter. Lou Groza tries to pull the Browns within two points, but his field goal attempt is blocked by Gector. An alert Brown lineman recovers the ball and tries to heave it to number 35, Galen Fiss. 
But Mel Renfro intervenes and intercepts the Aaron football. As he did against Washington, Meredith comes up with the clutch pass. And the calculated scramble as the Cowboys drive to victory. Leading Reeves perfectly, the Cowboys reach the Browns' 10-yard line. From there, it takes Don Perkins nine knifing strides to victory as time runs out on the Browns. The 26-14 win kept Dallas in first place. A title was certain only if they could beat the Cardinals. The Cowboys beat them with the big play. Behind center Dave Manders blocking, Dan Reeves went virtually untouched up the middle for a touchdown. The second big offensive play was by Bob Hayes, who beat Pat Fisher to the goal line and the ball. Mel Renfro's interception off Chuck Howley's deflection was the big Dallas defensive play. The situation dictated certain simple strategy. Give the ball to Perkins. Don delivered the touchdown and Cardinal title hopes faded in the fog. These are the eyes of the fastest man in shoulder pads. Bob Hayes is a charter member of Speed Incorporated and led all NFL receivers with 13 touchdowns. It's almost impossible to shut Hayes down with a lone defender. Hayes' deceptive change of pace and fluid moves make him an elusive target in the open field. What people come to see are his touchdowns. Bob beat defenders by the mere margin of a vainly outstretched arm. Or by a mile. His 13 touchdowns came on the shortest patterns and almost the very longest. But no matter how short or long, he did it with speed. Hayes epitomizes the Dallas speed, breathtaking speed that came within an eyelash of taking them to the Super Bowl. Speed that went flat out to a title.